Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on, give the Lord some praise today. He's the one that holds our future. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Victor, would you join me on stage and get a hold of somebody by the hand today. We're going to go before the Lord in the word of prayer. Maybe you came in this morning needing a miracle, maybe needing God to give you a word this morning. Well, listen, we want to pray that God will speak to your heart this morning. Pastor Victor. Father, we come before you as an army, God. And Lord, in your presence, as we spend time worshiping you, Lord Father, we lift up every single need that is represented here this morning, God. Or sometimes calamity brings us to church and and that's simply distress or, or debt or frustration. There's things that sometimes you want to get our attention. But Lord Father, we want to say thank you for the trials and the tribulation, oh God. Because it's through trials and tribulations what we call upon you. We call to you, oh God. So God, as an army, as we're here in this atmosphere of the, the miraculous, we pray for those that are sick in body, those that are in the hospital this morning, oh Lord. Those, Lord Father, who find themselves distressed and in debt, oh God. Lord Father, we pray, God, that you'll bring peace in the midst of a storm, oh God. God, we pray for those that, that come with a heavy heart this morning, and it's hard for them to worship because of what they're facing right now. One thing we know is that, Lord Father, you hold our tomorrow. You hold our today, oh God. So, Father, we pray right now that you would strengthen those who have feeble knees, oh God. Strengthen those who come in with heavy hearts, oh Lord. And Lord, we thank you that you take broken pieces and, and you turn those broken pieces into masterpieces. Would you begin to strengthen and Lord Father, confirm your word, Lord. We lift up our posture to you that you would be with them, oh God. That you'll give them traveling mercies in a time of rest, oh God. And that when he comes back, Lord, as he continues to envision and build this church, Lord, would you continue to be with him and his family, oh God. We pray for this 10 o'clock service, oh God. Lord, we pray for salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, that it will be easy to preach the gospel. Oh, Lord, Father, that many will give their lives to you. In the name of Jesus, as an army, we say amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Come on and give the Lord a good, good hand of praise this morning. Excited to be in the house of God this evening. Afternoon, morning, whatever coast you're on. How many of you know that we're in the season of favor, increase, and multiplication? So some people are clapped because they got seed in the ground. Been sowing, and when you've been praying, and when you've been giving, and when you've been fasting, and you've been believing, and you've been planting those seeds, we're grateful when we start to see the rain come. Because rain means that everything that hey, hey, rain means that when everything that we put in the ground is going to come up eventually. And I hear the sound of the abundance of rain over this house. Elijah took. Elijah told Ahab after he just dealt with 500 prophets of Baal and it was a drought in the land didn't rain he told the king hey go eat and go drink because you may not see it right now but I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and church, we're here to prophesy that to you right now. You may not see anything in your field right now. You may not see anything in your household right now. You may not see anything in your bank account right now. You may not see anything in your body right now. But we're here to declare to you that we hear the sound of the abundance. Something just hit me, y'all. But you, for those of you who have been like giving up and that you'll never get to a breakthrough, we're here to declare that we hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And when God 
opens up the windows of heaven. He pours you out. He pours you out. He pours you out of blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. So we got a song. Say it's my time for increase. It's my time for favor. My seed has been planted. And I see multiplication. Come on, you got to stand up. You got to clap for this one. Come on.
Just lift your hands all over this place. Come on. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Yes, we thank you for the abundance of rain. But it's only by his power. It's only because of Jesus. Come on, just take a moment to thank him. We had to thank him in the first service, and you got to thank him in the second service. You are you where you are today. You have what you have today. 
You're at the level you're at the level today because of what Jesus has done within your life. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the favor, God. We thank you for the increase, God. The multiplication that is upon our lives, oh God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now give the Lord one more good, good hand of praise this morning. Woo, come on. What a powerful, powerful song. And I'll just tell you, I, I just fell in love with that song as they introduced it this morning. Because it's so true. If you've been sowing and you got seed in the ground, you can't help but to hear the rain. Might be a little far off, might be a little close, but I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the rainstorm to come within my life. Come on now. I'm ready for that rainstorm to come in my life, to be poured out upon my life because I've been sowing, I've been planting, I've been giving, and there's increase and multiplication coming over my life. Receive that this morning. Woo, come on. Praise the Lord. Give this worship team a good, good hand today. Get a hold of your Bibles. Turn with me to the book of Psalms chapter 5. And I, I just want to take a few moments and then uh, don't leave right after the service. We're going to do something real, real special um, before everybody leaves. Uh, so don't, don't leave right after the service. But this morning I have the privilege to share God's word with you today. And uh, as our pastors are there in Hawaii, keep them in prayer. I just count it a privilege and an honor to stand before uh, our church, Victory Outreach San Diego, and to minister God's word. God is doing something very, very powerful and special here in our church. And maybe you came today and you say, man, why? Why is it that, man, these people are so excited and on fire and just really loving God the way they do? I, I'll tell you why. It's because we remember where we come from. We remember what God has done within our lives. And God is increasing our lives. And so we're grateful, grateful here this morning. And I pray that this morning you get a hold of this word and be blessed. We've been in a series called Destiny and Favor. And uh, I believe that our pastor has directed us and allowed us to tap into something that's very, very powerful. And if we can get a hold of this, if we walk this every single day of our lives, I'll tell you, your life will not be the same, just like the song says. But look at what Psalms chapter 5, verse 12. And I want to use this text as a foundation, and then we'll come back to it. But Psalms 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 12, reads like this. For you, O Lord, bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you. We thank you for everything done and that you continue to do within our lives. Father, we, we stand here as a testimony of your power, of your changing power upon the, the lives of people, oh God. Father, we take a moment to thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, oh God. Father, because we remember where we come from, oh God. And Father, our lives have, Father, never been this good until you've came into our lives. And we thank you for every single blessing. We thank you for every single opportunity that you've given us as the people of God to worship you, to serve you, to work for you. Father, today we give you praise, glory, and all the honor. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says amen and amen. Give your neighbor a high five and you may be seated this morning. Would you look to your neighbor and just tell them you need favor in your life. You need favor in your life. We need favor in our life. We've been in a series called Destiny and Favor. And this morning I want to take a few moments to talk to you about the power of favor. The power of favor. And the power of favor, we need to understand that God wants to give us favor in everything that we do and everywhere we go. And when we walk in favor, things are different in our lives. And many of you feel that here this morning. I, I feel that here this morning. You know, my life 
is not the same as it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And even before I was saved, 27 years ago, my life has not been the same. And I'll tell you, I'm grateful for everything that God has done within my life. Do we got any grateful people in the house this morning? Come on, has God done some things for you? Has God turned some things around in your life? And we're not the same. And some of us are not even the same the way we were last year. You all look different. You look great. And some of you are not even the same as you were last month. That's how much you've grown because of the favor of God upon your life. And so this morning, what I want to do is simply allow us to see how to get the favor of God upon our lives. And I, I, I want to give you some scriptures to help build this foundation that I believe that you can write down and even read later on and really begin to get a hold of that scripture so it'll, it'll minister to your life. But last, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had an opportunity to minister and I gave you a definition of favor. And there's so much to the word favor. And I shared with you how the definition of favor is, is a privilege or an opportunity that, that, you, every, that people may have, but there's more to that definition, and let me just give you a little bit more of it. The definition of favor also means to delight or pleasure or goodwill. In other words, it means that God finds pleasure and delight in his children, and with that, he extends favor to his children. Do we got any children of God in the house? Yes. I'll ask you one more time. Do we got any children of God in the house? Today, there are many people and even Christians that sometimes chase the wrong thing to try to get favoritism. And many times what we need to understand is that regardless of what we have and what type of things we have, the, the best thing that you and I can have today is favor, favor from God. Now, when you get that favor, yes, God will open the windows of heaven over your life. But look at what Proverbs chapter 22, verses 1 says. A good man is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. Get a hold of that. Learn to love favor rather than things. See, when you know you got favor, what happens, favor will keep you focused. Because many times we, we have a tendency to want to go after things. And I know in the beginning it could seem like that, you know, because you hear about the blessings of God and you hear about how God will open the windows of heaven over your life. And, and, I, and I get it because sometimes the culture we come from, or, or, or let me say the background we come from, we didn't have many things. And that's how I grew up. When I grew up, I didn't have many things. And the moment God came into my life, you know, God began to bless me and God began to increase my life. And sometimes we can get a little off track when it comes to why do we want the favor of God. But I got news for you. The favor of God is more powerful than things. Amen. See, and when you have the favor of God, it keeps you focused. And when you've got favor, it puts you in a positive posture. A positive posture when you have favor. Regardless of what you drive or what you have or where you live, it puts you in a positive posture. And I can't help but to think about one of our brothers in our church. Many of you know him. Many of you see him. And, and, and I like, I don't know his whole name on, on his social media, but it's, it's Happy Alex. Come on, Happy Alex. <laughs> and some people may laugh at that. Some people may, you know, think, you know, oh, all right, that's cool or that's corny or whatever the case may be. But I get it. I get why he's happy. Because he remembers what God has done within his life. He don't care what, what he may look like. He doesn't care what people may say or criticize about him. He remembers where God has delivered him from. And now he's a business owner on his way. Come on, somebody. Go ahead and clap for the Lord. He says he's a multi-million dollar business. Not yet. And the reason I, 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 I bring him out because... I remember, I remember one day when he first got saved, when he, didn't, when he didn't let his hair grow out and he was all bald and tacked down, he wanted to leave because he was getting ready to shank somebody with a screwdriver. 
And I remember telling them, brother, God has a plan for your life. God has a destiny for your life. If you will just stick it out, put him first, watch how God will bless your life. And look at him today. That's just one of the testimonies of the power of God. There were so many. I look at Brother Johnny Duran and how God is raising him up and God is using his life. Many of you don't know his story. But there's favor upon his life. I could go on and on and on and on of men of God and women of God that favor has been upon their lives. And what happens is they have a certain type of posture. And see, when you know you got favor, it keeps you focused and it gives you a certain type of posture. But let's take a look at a few scriptures here that I want to give you. I want to move quick through them. But I want to give you these scriptures because they're powerful. And I believe it will minister to your heart. Let's look at favor in action. Genesis chapter 19, verse 19. And you've got to kind of read the whole chapter to, to really get a hold of it. But let me read you the verse that sticks out. Genesis 19, 19, it says, Your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. And this is talking about Lot, where Lot found favor with the angel of the Lord. And Lot was told to leave the city before it was going to be destroyed. And many of you know it was Sodom and Gomorrah. And the angel of the Lord told Lot to leave the city before it was destroyed. But then he says, take your wife and take your daughters. Leave the city because I'm going to destroy it. But then Lot says, you know what? I can't get to the place you want me to go. But there's a city close by. And that city close by, if you will allow me to be there in camp, I could get to the place, to the mountain where you want me to go. And what happened was the angel of the Lord found favor in his sight for Lot. And because he went to that city, that city was saved. See, when there's favor on your life, it just is not for you, but will overflow to the people around you. It will overflow to your house. Wherever you go, there will be favor upon your life. Some of you are sitting here this morning because somebody had favor upon their life. Some of you are saved here this morning. Some of you are blessed here this morning because there was favor that was overflowing over your grandmother, over your parents, over your brother, over your sister. And you are standing here this morning because of somebody else's favor. And here's, I got news for you today. Somebody's life will be touched. Somebody else's life will be touched because of the favor that overflows in your life. Give the Lord a good, good hand of praise this morning. Exodus 3, 21 reads like this. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And God was getting ready to release the people of Israel out of captivity from the Egyptians. And and what happened as they were released out of captivity, the Bible says that God would give them favor and that they would leave with some things. And as you read into verse 22, talk, it'll talk about how the women would go to the neighbors and go to the Egyptians and even take some of their silver and some of their gold because God seen, God gave them favor. And as they walked away, you got to understand something. As they walked away, there are certain things that they were, they were slaves and they didn't earn things. And that's the same way God will do. He, what he will do within our lives is give us favor in things we did not earn. He will give us favor in things that we did not earn. I don't know about you, but I didn't come from a heavy background of people going to church and serving God. But I got news for you. I got around some people that have favor. And there was favor that overflowed within my life. And I've got things today that I did not earn. I've got things in my life that I did not earn. And I'm grateful here today. And that's what the favor of God will do. He will give you things you did not earn. Some of you are sitting here today. On these beautiful chairs, in this AC area, in a building that is paid off. You didn't earn it, but that's what favor will do. Favor will give you things you did not earn. 1 Samuel 16, verses 22, says, Then Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. See, David found favor with Saul, and when David was a little boy, Many of you know the story. He would play the harp for King Saul. Anytime Saul would be distressed, he would call on David to come and play the harp. And what does this tell us today here? What does it teach us here today? Is that favor will bring you before great people. People will begin to say, how did he get in the building? 
How did he get that job? How did he get that promotion? Remember this, God will put you before great people because of the favor of God within your life. Get a hold of that. The favor of God will put you before great people. Deuteronomy 33, verse 23, reads like this. And, and of uh, Nepal, he said, Oh, Nepal, satisfied with favor. This was one of the kings. And full of the blessing of the Lord, possessed the west and the south. And see, this man was one of the sons of Jacob. And he was full of the blessings of the Lord because he learned to be satisfied with favor. Now, what does that mean? That means is that whenever you're satisfied with the favor of God upon your life, understand this, you begin to possess more than what you have. See, a lot of times there are people that are walking around, even Christians, that are unsatisfied. And those that walk around unsatisfied is because they don't have the favor of God upon their lives. But I came to let you know is if you learn to put God first and you learn to look to God, you will learn to be satisfied in the favor of the Lord. Now you may say, should we be satisfied? I don't think we should be satisfied with a level of growth that we're at. But I believe that we should be satisfied with what God has done within our lives and will continue to do within our lives. Come on, give the Lord a good hand of praise this morning. We say, what does that mean? Can I just tell you something? I've got no reason to complain. I don't have all the money I like to have. I don't have all the resources I like to have. I'm not at the level that I, that, that I wish I could be. But I'll tell you one thing. I've got no reason to complain. I've got no reason to walk around with my head down. I've got no reason to mope around. I've got no reason to walk around discouraged. Do trials come? Oh, yes, they come. Do situations come? Oh, yes, they come. But I am grateful for what God has done and will continue to do in my life. I'm satisfied because of the favor of God. 1 Samuel 27, verse 5 reads like this. If I have found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. What is this talking about is that David found favor with the enemy's camp. And what happened is that they gave him a city. This king gave him a city. They gave him Ziglag. See, whenever you have favor with God, it will even cause your enemies to give you stuff. See, when you got favor with God, it'll cause your enemies to give you stuff. They will do things for you. I know you burned them. I know you probably did some things to them. But when the favor of God is upon your life, he turns everything around. He turns those situations around. And even your enemies will start to give you stuff. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 5 reads like this. If it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tomb, that I may rebuild it. Nehemiah found favor in the king's eyes. And understand this, the king was his boss. Nehemiah found favor with his boss. See, they favor will cause your boss to do stuff for you that he won't do for others. He will cause that increase to come upon your life because of the favor of God. Or how about this? He will give you the time off for conference. He will give you the time off even though you used up all your sick days. Even though you used up all your vacation days. And he may say, you know what, I don't know why I'm doing this. But I'm going to go ahead and give you the time off anyway. And I'm going to pay you anyway. That's the favor of God upon your life. <laughs> favor ain't fair. Just look at your neighbor and tell him favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. But the favor of God will open doors for your life. See, you don't even have to sometimes even work towards it or work hard for it. Favor just comes. Favor falls upon your life. I was talking to one of our ministers this morning, and last week we were, we were traveling, and he got this call, and he's like, okay, it was, you know, he was hearing about it, and they were telling him about it, you know, business and doing some things there. And even today as we were talking, he says, hey, remember that call I got? I said, yeah. One that was, you know, it was just like a weird random call. <laughs> he got it. He says, do you know this call was one of the main chairmen for the schools and they want me to do a project 
to open door uh, to 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 do this project and like i said favor will put you in front of great people favor will open doors for you favor begins to fall upon your life and it ain't for you say well what does that mean that means it's just an open door to you don't know what kind of business will come through this man of God. Come on, give a Lord a good hand of praise. That's favor. See, when you have favor with God, you can step through certain doors that the enemy has shut before in your life. There's certain doors that you're going to be able to walk through that the enemy has closed. See, and some of us, you may not even be qualified. Hello, somebody. You may not even be qualified. See, the world or maybe uh, uh, certain things or certain situations may have said you will never qualify. You will never qualify to be a minister of the gospel. You will never qualify to purchase at home. You will never qualify to be that employer. But I got news for you. When the favor of God comes upon your life, God begins to qualify you for that business, that business owner. God begins to qualify you for that home. God begins to qualify your life. God begins to qualify you because of the favor. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse 30. It says, Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mary found favor with God and was chosen to birth Jesus. Found favor with God. See, when you have favor with God, he can use your life to birth ministry for people to be touched for God's glory and God's honor. Give the Lord a good hand of praise for that. God will use your life to bring birth. Now, as I get ready to tie everything up, the question is, is how do we get favor? The Bible says this, that the Bible says that favor can be found or obtained. Found or obtained. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2 reads like this. is a good man obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 8, 35 says, for whoever finds favor, me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. The key word here is obtain. In other words, get it. Go out and get favor. But how do you get favor? You get favor by what you do. What is the relationship that you have with the Lord? What does it look like? And that's a question you and I have to ask ourselves. What does that relationship look like with you and I with the Lord? Because the one that gives us favor, the ones that gives us favor to open doors is that relationship that we have with God. Is it a good one? So every day we get favor because every day we are getting a hold of God. Do we, need, do we got any people that like to pray and talk to our Heavenly Father? Amen. Come on. Do we got any people that like to get a hold of God? Now look at what Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. I wrote this down, and let me just throw this in there. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Hello, somebody. Let me read that again. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. And obtains favor from the Lord. See, because women will make you seek the Lord. (laughs) They'll make you pray. And here's how I like to put it. How God would say, hey, man, whatever gets you to talk to me. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Your wife makes you pray. Hey, you're going to make it through the day. (laughs) But wives, are you the helpmate? See, wives should be pushing the husbands to get better. To help their husbands. Because the closer the husband gets to God, the more favor he will have. And remember, women of God, when the favor of God comes upon your man, comes upon your husband, it overflows into you because you become one. It works together. It works together. It works together. The favor of God. I thought I'd just give that to the married couples. But now look at this. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 26. And the child Samuel grew. Everybody say grew. Grew Grew in stature and in favor, both with the Lord and men. 
See, this is not only telling us to obtain favor, but that we can grow in favor. And favor can grow in our lives. Favor can be increased in our lives. Samuel grew in favor. And see, you have to have favor increase in your life every single day. I believe this, that every single day, every single month, every single year, every single week, we should be growing in favor because there should be growth and increase within our life. But look at verse uh, cha uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 52. Remember, you could write all these scriptures down and go back and read them later on. Luke 2, 52 says, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. See, these scriptures give us the idea that favor can be increased in our lives. I don't know about you, but I want more favor in my life. I can tell you right now, God has blessed me. God has raised me up and God has done great things in within my life. But I want more favor within my life because God has ministry in my life and God has great things in my life. But I need more favor to walk through the doors that he has for my life that need to be open. I want to give God all the glory because of the favor that he has for my life. But what is this? Notice what it is saying is that Samuel talked about how he increased in favor Luke talked about how Jesus increased in favor. But notice what it said. It said, God and man. God and man. Say God and man. God and man. God and, man. and this is where a lot of people are missing it because they don't understand and comprehend how important it is, yes, to get favor from God, but yes, how also it is important to get favor from man. You may say, really? Oh, yeah, the Bible talks about it. To get favor with God, but also to get favor with man. See, we miss it because we live in a culture today that says that we don't need anybody. We don't need anybody. And I could do it all by myself. I got news for you. You didn't get here by yourself. Somebody led you to the Lord. Somebody's helping you right now. You ain't that powerful leader. You are being discipled. You are being coached. You are being raised up. Somebody is sowing into your life. And that's why it's important that we get favor with man. And if you want to get to the place that God has destined you for your life, then somebody's going to help to help you to get there. I'll be honest with you. I didn't get here by myself. And I am not on my way by myself. I listen to leaders. I listen to people that God has put in my life. And I am not getting here by myself. I am not on this journey by myself. Your pastors are not by themselves. Your pastors are not on their journey by themselves. They have somebody helping them along the way. But a lot of times we can't get no help because we don't like anybody. Hello. See, there's a mentality today in people that you don't have to listen to nobody. You don't have to talk to nobody. You don't have to serve nobody. You don't have to help nobody. You don't have to respect nobody. Come on, somebody. I just hit a nerve right there. I just felt the air deflate from the room. <laughs> you seeing them pop up. <laughs> but here's the thing is, you know where you see it the most? is in the workplace. See, the world has taken on the concept, which I believe is a biblical concept, and they twisted it. They said, I ain't kissing up to nobody. You may say, how is that a biblical concept? The Bible puts it this way. They, the Bible calls it as serving. Serving. And many times people look at it as it's kissing up. Or how about brown nosing? Come on, somebody. People think that. But it's not that. It's called serving. Everybody say that. Say serving. serving. Say it like you do it. Say serving. serving. The Bible talks about serving. See, whenever you serve and assist and help someone increase in their success, that's when you increase favor. Do more than what is asked of you. Just don't do what's on your job description. Go over and above. Assist somebody. Help somebody. And watch how favor will increase within your life. I knew you wouldn't like that. You may say, I don't have to do that. That's not in my job description. I got news for you. If we're men and women of God and we're Christians and we have integrity, God put character within our lives, I believe we should go to work early, on time, give our very best, go over and above, and be the best worker that we can be. Give the Lord a good hand of praise if you do that. Come on. You know why? 
Because one thing I've learned, it's very hard to get rid of or fire a person that goes over and above. To, to, to get rid of a person that goes over and above. Oh, I, 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 I've worked some secular jobs. And, and I'll tell you, I, I, I remember very clearly. Because my, my, my grandfather, my dad taught me how to work very, very hard. And I remember going in and working very hard. And even though I was messing up, come on, somebody, getting high on the job. That wasn't lately. I'm just saying back in the day. <laughs> but I was getting high on the job. But I was a hard worker. I'll bust it out. Be the first one there, the last one to leave. Get the job done, making everybody else look bad. And they, would, they, they, they wouldn't get rid of me, even though my flaws, even though my mistakes, even all those things. But then there was one time I got this one job. I kind of only really had like two secular jobs, and that was it. The whole entire time since I was 16 years old. I quit school. I, I quit. Ask my wife. I quit school. I wasn't able to get paid taxes. They paid me under the table. But I quit school. I went to work, and I was there. And then what happened was, is I, I, you know, I, I stopped listening. I stopped working hard. I stopped working hard. And then what did they do? I was the first one on the list to get rid of. And I got rid. I, I, they let me go. But then the la that last job before I moved to San Diego, I said, man, I ain't getting fired again. So I'm gonna work hard. Regardless of what happens in my, I'm going to work hard. It may have been that not good of a paying job. It may have not had all the benefits, but I was just grateful to have a job. I was just grateful to do honest work. I was just grateful to be able to get a paycheck in. And what did I do? I went over and above. And I was able to increase. So what am I saying there? Is that just do more than what your job description says. And watch how favor will go upon your life. Assist somebody. Help somebody. Go over and above and watch favor begin to fall upon your life. Come on, give the Lord a good hand of praise this morning. I just thought I'd that in there. Because sometimes it can get a little crazy at your job place. Let me just say this. Don't get caught up in all the mess. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in all the shop talk and all that stuff. Don't, don't, don't get all twisted with all that stuff. Just stay focused on the job. Stay focused on, on, on what God has blessed you with and watch how God will raise you up. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Come to the keyboard this morning as I get ready to tie everything up here. Did you receive something this morning? How many of you got favor? How many of you want favor? Yeah. I open with this text and I want to close with this verse. Notice in Psalms chapter 5 verse 12. It says for favor O Lord. Will bless the righteous. With favor. You will surround him as with a shield. Amen. God blesses the righteous with favor. Who does he bless? And gives favor. The righteous. The righteous. Who are the righteous? Who are the righteous? Remember, I, I'm not talking about perfect, but I'm talking about the righteous. Now, let me explain to you who are the righteous. There's two levels of righteousness or righteous. There's a positional righteousness. You say, well, what is that? This is when a person recognizes that they are a sinner you've been saved and washed by the blood of Jesus then automatically there is favor that is put upon your life you are positionally righteous because you gave your life to God you surrendered your life to God and all of a sudden there's favor that has been put upon your life and I remember that day in my life very clearly many of you know the date I tell you to you all the time January 20th, 1990, 6 p.m., Fresno County Jail, Audi. I remember it very, very clearly. There was positional righteousness put upon my life, and many of you know that day in your life as well, where your life was changed, transformed, you've been saved, and then all of a sudden, there's a righteousness upon your life. But the second level of righteousness is relational righteousness. And this is where his day-to-day -day relationship with God, relational righteousness. And it's just like with your children, your kids. They're your kids, so automatically 
They're positionally your kids. They're positionally your children. But sometimes what happens is there could be a strain on that relationship when they don't listen to the day-to-day -day things. And that's the same thing with God. Sometimes when we don't listen to God and the day-to-day -day things, it puts a strain on our relationship. And what happens when you have a strain on that relationship? You have a tendency to be distant or to disconnect or walk away or step back a little bit. And what did the Bible say is that those that are blessed are the righteous. Those that have favor, blessed with favor are the righteous. And that's why church is so important that every single day that relationship with you and God, me and God, continues to grow. Because when it grows, then the favor grows every single day in our lives. See, Psalms 5 talks about relational righteousness. And some people don't have the favor of God because they are not making the right moral choices or not listening to God. See, the world has a mentality that church life is here, family's here, all these things, all my different things are here. I don't mix the two together. Well, I've got news for you, and I came to expose that lie. Because you shouldn't just have favor in the house of God. You should have favor in your own house. You should have favor in your company, at your workplace, wherever you go and whatever you do. You should have favor wherever you go so it all works together. And when making the right choices, then favor will be upon our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse 16, for the righteous man may fall seven times but arise again rise again see the righteous know how to get back up the righteous know how to no no I ain't gonna do that no I ain't gonna mess with that no I ain't gonna do that I'm not gonna mess with that you might lose a little bit of friends you might lose a little bit of status you might lose certain things but you'll have favor within your life what did Psalms 512 says oh for you, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him with a shield. When we get favor from God, it begins to surround us like a shield. See, because then you get favor in the house of God. You get favor in your house. You get favor in your family. You get favor in your workplace. And all of a sudden, when favor is around you, it's like a shield. So when things come your way, trials come your way, circumstance come your way, they don't get you off track. They don't move you around. They don't mess you up. You keep on moving forward. You keep on marching. You keep on standing because of the favor of God upon you. It's like a shield. I'm not saying you're not going to have problems and issues, but it doesn't affect you. Oh, and I've seen that from my very own eyes. I've seen that with my very own eyes from our founders to our pastors. When they walk in favor, it doesn't matter what trial, what circumstance comes their way. It's like a shield that is around their life. And that shield has been around this house. That's why we can move. We can march. We can be the army that God has called us to be because of the favor of God. Psalms 30 verse 5 says, his favor is for life life this favor is for life and we need favor when we're young we need favor for our younger generation we need favor for our kids that are downstairs right now in the children's ministry we need favor for them in their school in their education everything they do we need favor in God's anointed now generation and the youth all of them we need favor for all of the singles that are there you need favor when you're married you need favor when you got no money you need favor when you got money you need favor in your ministry you need favor in building your home you need favor even if you're going through a christian recovery home when you've got favor upon your life it opens doors for your life you need favor stand to your feet this morning i'm done here's what i want to close with and I, this is what i want you to get a hold of 
Many of you have been experiencing favor. I don't believe it's because of just your effort, your good looks, your ability, your strong right hand. I, I believe there's a part, yes, that we, we give and we do on our part. Do you know why there's favor upon your life? Because there's favor upon this house. There's favor upon this house. I say it again. There's favor upon this house. And I'll tell you why. Because the leadership of this house have determined to do things right. What the devil tried to do to this house and destroy this house, I got news for you. God turned it around. God has turned it around. That's why this building is paid off. That's why there's increase and multiplication and favor upon our lives. Because of the character that is upon this house. See, there is power and favor for those that make the right choices. Every single day as we walk in righteousness. Every single day as we build this relationship with God. There will be favor that will be poured out upon our lives. And I know there's many of you here today. You got excited when we sang that song. I was excited. Yeah. I, I, I almost, I almost busted out in the mood, but I, I was, I was just trying to, you know, kind of. I, I didn't know how that was gonna work out. <laughs> I, I, I felt like I was getting ready to, to, to just bust a move, and it's like, Lord, this ain't, I, this ain't never happened to me like this. I, I, I don't know how this is gonna work out. So I just stood there because you got preach. But, but here's the thing. When you know, when you know there's favor in your life and you know that you kind of, you hear the rain, you, you hear that rain, and all of a sudden you hear it louder, it's almost like this. Watch here, do this. Do that. Tap your finger with your finger. Just your finger, your finger. Tap it. Just tap that one finger. Hear it? Sounds like a little sprinkle. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Do two fingers. Two fingers. Hear it? It's a little louder. Get three. Three fingers. You hear it? Get four. Just give your whole hand. Give your whole hand. Give your whole hand. Abundance of rain! Abundance of favor, abundance of harvest is coming upon this house. And I declare to you today that we are going to see favor in our ministry, in our lives, stronger than we've ever seen it before. It's the year of Jubilee over our ministry. Woo! Just lift your hands. As a matter of fact, as the worship team comes to get ready, to sing this song. If that message ministered to your heart, get to this altar this morning. You want more favor? You need favor upon your life? Come to this altar this morning. And I want those that got favor to begin to pray for those ones that need favor. Come on, get up your seat.